championship game, this was really, well, it went about the exact way I expected it to go. One, again, you, you talk about never betting against Tom Brady. You never get, you never bet against Patrick Mahomes. We've all learned that very quickly um, as well. And even when they were down 9 nothing in this game, you never felt that they were out of it. You only felt it was a matter of time before they got right back in. And they did, and they, they did what we all expected them to do. And they won that game going away 38-24. I mean, the final score was not nearly as close as it looked. It, it, the, game, the game was pretty much always, except for that little 9 nothing period, in control right. of the Kansas City Chiefs. So I got to say, listen, the Bills won their – when they beat the uh, Colts in the wild card, they won their first playoff game since 1995. Right. 1995-1996. They got to the first AFC championship game since 1994. We don't know what the Patriots are going to do. Uh, we're not we're, we're not uh, set on that yet. Remains to be seen. We don't know. Hey, the Jets could trade for Deshaun Watson. All of a sudden, the Jets launched themselves in, into the contention conversation. Nonetheless, this is an impressive team, man. Great defense. I love their quarterback. I think he's improving year by year. He made a huge leap this year. They always talk about teams that make a run like this. Oh, they'll be back. You heard Tony Romo say on the broadcast. Uh, they'll be back next year. Will the Bills now, is this their time? Are they going to be a force in the AFC going forward? You can never really be too sure uh, because of uh, they, they may never come back because of the teams getting better and better. And, you know, you got Lamar Jackson. I Me, mean, I feel like all he is is just a deep threat away and maybe some better quarterback decisions. And, you know, maybe he'll get to a, a conference championship game, maybe even a couple out of that with Patrick Mahomes. Um, but as far as the Steelers, they may need another quarterback. Uh, the Browns, they're, they're on their way. I mean, they're, they're coming up with it and they keep working hard. And you never know where they could be. Um, but I would not say that it's over for the Bills. But as for right now, the AFC is wide open ex except for the Chiefs. I think that's, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, again, I, I tend to agree with you. I, I uh, yeah, it, you just never know. You really never right. know because I thought the Jaguars a couple of years ago when they made their run to the AFC Championship game and, and had New England. Yeah, exactly. They had New England on the ropes yep. there for a second. I'm like, wow, the Jaguars, how about this? And they lose that game. And I thought to myself, okay, they're a move here, move one or, one or two moves away from being right back in the spot and watch out for the Jaguars. They're coming. Right. As you said, they disappeared. They haven't been anywhere close to the playoffs since. Although now with uh, Trevor Lawrence in all likelihood on the way and Urban Meyer there as the new coach, I mean, we'll see, but you could never be too sure because things, hey, things in sports in general, but especially in the NFL uh, can change from year to year. Uh, Marvin right. McIntyre is our guest here in the Mike Newhaven podcast. We are previewing Super Bowl 55 between the Bucks and the Chiefs and also recapping the NFC and AFC championship games. Uh, like I said, Josh Allen made a huge leap forward this year. Um, it's kind of hard to rank quarterbacks now because we don't know what's going to happen with a few of them. One of them already retired, and that's Phillip Rivers. Nonetheless, where does Josh Allen rank? Is he in your top, is he in your top 10, and dare I say in your top five? I would say that he's definitely in my top five. Um, more like five to like seven, you know, um, it, it can dwindle. Um, but, but I would say that he's definitely stepped up this year and I definitely can say that he's definitely gotten a lot better. Uh, he's proven himself as a better passer than, um, than some of the elite passes in the league. So, you know, and it's a lot of quarterbacks that have fallen off, you know, such as, um, Drew Brees and, um, I would say, who else? Lamar Jackson. And, you know, I, I would say that Josh Allen is definitely a top five to top seven quarterback in this league. And he definitely deserves some respect for how he has uh, gotten better throughout the years, even though that a lot of people did not expect for him to get better and for him to change his approach to how he throws the football. But he's definitely increasing his accuracy and he's definitely getting even better year by year. So we can expect for him to explode even more as he gets closer to his prime. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we had to rank him, would you put him ahead of Lamar? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I'll put him Yeah, because Lamar is like, Lamar's like six for me. Because if I had to rank him, number one, as we know, is Daniel Jones. I'm kidding. Uh, number one, obviously Mahomes. Number two, 
talent, we're talking talent wise. Rodgers, I got even even with the bad loss, I still got to put Rodgers at two because Rodgers at the regular season. I would have to put Tom Brady <laughs> number two. I was going to put Tom Brady like three or four. Three or four. Talent wise, like I'm talent saying, wise, yeah. T- talent wise, obviously Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers is two for me. Three because I'm not I'm not leaving Tom Brady. I'm sorry, my top five. Three is Deshaun Watson. I have okay. talent wise, I think Deshaun belongs in the top five. Four is Brady, and then five would be where I was, was going to put Josh Allen. Because right now, I think Josh Allen is better than Lamar Jackson. Okay. Um, you know, so that, that yeah, that's, that's kind of a fair way to rank them. Um, the Bills, they're a pass-heavy offense. They, they have, I mean, they, they like to establish a run here and there, as every offense likes to do. Some offense is too much, but they're a pass-heavy offense. Right. Um, if their running game had been a bit better, do you think this game potentially would have been closer? Or dare I say, do you think the Bills would have had a chance to pull off a pretty shocking upset? I don't think it would have been an upset, but I definitely think the game would have been closer. I would say a lot closer um, because, uh, you know, just them being able to balance the time and things like that. I feel like that stuff matters when it comes to what you want to do when it comes to being calculated. And also when it comes to being able to just throw play action passes because of that reason. So I feel like that definitely would help. So, yeah. Um, so as far as Josh Allen in this particular game, I mean, he's young. It's his first time in an AFC championship game. And even with the stadium not being at full capacity because of obviously the coronavirus pandemic, it's still, hey, if you don't get psyched up about a chance to go to the Super Bowl, I mean, something's wrong with you. Um, if you're in a position like that, how much credit though? I mean, they, they did get, give up 24 points, but like I said, the game wasn't as close as, as the final score would, would appear. Uh, how much credit do we give Kansas City's defense for last Sunday? I would give them a very good amount of credit. You know, I would say maybe about 35 to 40% credit because it definitely could have been a very, uh, closer game and it definitely could have been even more. Uh, nasty down the stretch in terms of like, you know, if, if they were like giving up touchdowns and things like that. But I would say that the defense definitely did step up. They were able to get to Josh Allen maybe about three times and, you know, just rush him and um, make him feel um, feel a little bit scattered and him wanting to throw the football as soon as possible, things like that. He threw an interception. So, and plus they doubled and they shut down Stefan Diggs, who was on fire um, last season. So, I feel like they definitely did step up. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll skip one of these questions because we've pretty much already covered it um, okay. as far as what we think for Josh Allen going forward. Patrick Mahomes now. Um, Patrick Mahomes, in terms of the playoff success that he's had to this point in his career, the first full season he had as a starter, they were in the AFC Championship game, and had it not been for a coin toss, had the Chiefs gotten the ball in that overtime instead of the Patriots, the Chiefs would have won the Super Bowl, not a doubt in right. my mind. Um, and then obviously he comes back the next season, they win the Super Bowl. This season, uh, now they're back in the Super Bowl with a chance to go back-to-back in terms of championships. Is he already better than two one-time Super Bowl winning quarterbacks in Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers? in terms of not only his playoff success to this point in his young career, but also his leadership? I would say a lot of people, they want to take, talk about leadership. I mean, um, not, not leadership, but longevity. Right. But I can't really go off of longevity for this, for, from what I'm seeing. I think that the fact that, uh, the fact that Patrick Mahomes has set up such a, a, a team-friendly contract He's going to be around. His, his team is going to be around, and he's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the league. So I feel like this, this definitely helps him. And I feel like this, this does already make him better than Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers because they both have issues with showing up. And, and uh, Drew Brees, he puts on disappearing acts like he's – like he's, <laughs> Houdini. <laughs> so, uh, and Aaron Rodgers, he does not really show up in the NFC title games. And Patrick Mahomes, he's just a different level of leadership and talent. So I'm definitely going to have to put them, I'm going to put 
Patrick Mahomes over them just in terms of his leadership capabilities and how he goes about winning and his impact for the team and 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 his stats and things like that. I mean, he's already done things that a whole lot of quarterbacks have never even dreamed of doing. But look, it's taken Aaron Rodgers like he, he's not getting he's not getting to where he wants to be, which is the Super Bowl. So he hasn't been there in eleven years now. And Drew Brees, he hasn't been there Longer, since 12. 12. So, and I think he's going to retire. So, I think that we could basically assume that that the fact that, it, that Patrick Mahomes put up the team friendly contract, they're going to be around. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, unless Patrick Mahomes suffers an injury, which obviously you hope does not happen. Right. Um, yeah, the Chiefs are going to be there really the, the entirety of uh, – pretty much as long as he's playing football. The Chiefs are always going to be in the mix um, for sure. Yeah, no, so I, I would have to say the same thing um, because, yeah, I mean, we talked about earlier, has Aaron Rodgers had games in the playoffs where his defense has let him down or it's not really his fault? Yeah, Drew Brees has kind of had the same thing happen to him too. But in terms of the success, yeah, I kind of have to give the nod to Patrick. And that, that's right, just right. – because I mean, it's not like when they were in their primes – Breeze and Rodgers did not have elite weapons. They didn't do as much as they could with. It's not like they were like dragging trash bags around. No, they had elite weapons around them. They just, for whatever reason, uh, partially themselves at times, couldn't get the job done, whereas Patrick to this point in his career has. So in terms of coaching, obviously, in order to have a great team, a, a huge part of it is having a great coach. And Andy Reid is certainly a great coach. Um, and this has been a great second act for him because it didn't end well in Philadelphia. I mean, he was in Philadelphia for 14 years. His last year before he got fired, they were four and 12. And I thought it was over for Andy Reid. And here he is in Kansas City about to coach in yet another Super Bowl. Um, you know, so it's it's been a, a great run for him. Uh, and I think he deserves a lot of credit, too. But in terms of how we dole out the credit, it's kind of like Brady and Belichick, right? We talked about earlier. For you, is it a 50-50 as well with uh, Mahomes and uh, Andy Reid? no. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's 50, 50. I think it's more like a 70, 30. In favor of whom? Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Okay. Because uh, Andy Reid, he had never gone to a Super Bowl prior to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And he did. The, the, the second that he got Patrick Mahomes, he got taken over the top. And no, Andy, Andy Reid was in the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Against right. the Patriots, they lost twenty four twenty one. McNabb got him there in TO. Right. right, but I'm just talking about in terms of winning. Oh, okay, yeah, and winning. They didn't win that game. Um, they lost. Yeah. And right, and I did forget that they did get there, but uh, um, but that happens, and uh, but, right. but just in terms of like him being able to take the team over the top and win, we have not seen that from Andy Reid, and he's had some serviceable quarterbacks and serviceable rosters on his team. In terms of like the offense, uh, I can give him a, a very good amount of credit. I would say a good like 40%. But just in terms of like responsibility and and like the leadership and the energy and the impact, that's 70, 30 uh Patrick Mahomes is in favor of that of that reasoning. And uh, I would say that um I would say that uh that that Patrick no, I would say that Andy Reid he's a he's a very good coach and he uh and he's definitely a Hall of Fame caliber coach mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna like try and take that much credit away from him he's definitely an awesome coach but uh I feel like if not for Patrick Mahomes or somebody of his level we could very well see him just being a coach without a Super Bowl. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. The quarterbacks he's had, Philadelphia, it was Donovan McNabb. Right. Um, Donovan McNabb, they went to Super Bowl, they didn't win. Michael Vick, and Michael Vick, after he got out of jail, was still a pretty effective quarterback. I don't think he had Nick Foles. I think that was Chip Kelly. Then he got to Kansas City. He had Alex Smith, obviously, pre that horrible leg injury. Alex, and Alex right. Smith was – he's had good quarterbacks. He's coached very good quarterbacks. But would he have done any of this with – I mean, he got to Super Bowl, like I said, with McNabb. But would he have accomplished any of this had he had prime McNabb, prime Vic, prime Smith? Probably not. Yeah. Right. They, they would go far. I just don't think they would go this far. Right. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's fair. 
Um, would we, you know, I, I think this question is interesting for me because, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is, is mega talented, of course. He's a transcendent quarterback. He's a transcendent athlete, period. But he also has the benefit of having a great roster. Not that I fault him for that. You know, that's right. I, that, that's perfectly fine. Um, every great Super Bowl champion, every great Super Bowl winning quarterback has had that. I mean, Peyton Manning had Marvin Harrison. How many times did uh, Tom Brady have great receivers throughout the years? Uh, Joe Montana had the greatest wide receiver of all time, for crying out loud, and Jerry Rice, amongst many other good players on his team. Um, wait, so wait, that, hold on, hold on. People, they forget that Tom Brady has had great receivers. Like, yeah, he has, like, for like, sure. Everybody wants to act like he's never had a great roster on his team, but he's had great people on his uh, – on his uh, side of the foot, on his part of the football. Yeah, no. Um, especially um, um, Danny Amendola, he was very. Um, yep. Julian Edelman. Effective Julian Edelman. I mean, yeah. there's people who would say. Yeah, Branch. Could potentially go to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, Wes Welker. Wes Welker. And, yeah. But a lot of people, they want to act like they want to discount his. Um, his receiving core just because of them not really being a high scoring team, but yeah. I could always give some credit to his uh, receiving core, but yes. I, yeah, I, he had great running backs too. I mean, he had clock killing Corey Dillon on his right, team yeah. for a little bit. He had Danny right. Woodhead. So, I mean, the guy, and obviously he had one of the greatest, if not the greatest tight end of all time and Rob Gronkowski right. um, on his team. So it's, it's not like the guy had a bunch of bums playing around him on the offensive end. No. And you know, obviously he had a great offensive line. But that being said, I mean, look at what Mahomes has. Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, guys like that. Just absolutely – Kareem Hunt's one of his running backs. I mean, they're loaded offensively. How how much credit do we – I mean, obviously, we assign a lot of credit to Patrick Mahomes, of course, yeah. Uh, But how much credit do we give the weapons he has around him? Just just in the ability to get open, I think that that deserves a lot of credit. Yeah. Um, but I would say I, I would give them a, a very good amount of credit. Let's say about 35, 35% of the credit, um, 35 to 40% of the credit. And then I would give like 60 to like 65 to uh, Patrick Mahomes. You know, if, if yeah, I had to, right. if I have to like give it, you know, give, if I had to give a number, you know, because. Yeah. Um, but but I do think I do think that um, that the fact that Alex Smith had the same the same weapons prior to Patrick Mahomes and he didn't get to a AFC title game that that ought to tell you the impact of Patrick Mahomes right there. Yeah, I think so, that's a good, that's a very good point. Yeah. So yeah. You know that's a, that's a good point because they, I mean they would with the Chiefs win playoff games yeah like they would they would. Um... They would win. They would always seem to win the wild card, and then they would get to the divisional. And that's when they would lose in the divisional. Right. Um, but yeah, it was pretty much the same cast of characters, minus a few guys here and there that are there now. And they, yeah, you're right. They were a good team, but not a great team. Mahomes has certainly put them over the top in that regard, which is why I said, you know, obviously we assign a great amount of credit to uh, Patrick Mahomes. Um, right. When I was when I had my brother-in-law on and we were doing the breakdown of the Baseball Hall of Fame, we were talking about a guy like Derek Jeter, for example, that we were saying that he would be great anywhere that he went. Even if he hadn't spent his whole career with the Yankees, he would right. be a great ball player anywhere because that's the level of talent that he had. Would it be fair to say the same thing about Patrick Mahomes? Like if Patrick Mahomes was the quarterback of the New York Jets right now, if Patrick Mahomes was the quarterback of the L.A. Chargers right now, or the Vegas Raiders, would, would Patrick Mahomes still be putting up this kind of productivity? I would not say – I wouldn't say that he would get to the Super – I would not say that he would get to the Super Bowl just, like, so soon, put it like that. But I would say that he would win a few Super Bowls. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say that he would get, get his team in the playoffs. And you put it like this. If, um, if Patrick Mahomes is on the Texans instead of Deshaun Watson, and, and and they're up 24-0. Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes closing that lead. All right. Yeah. All right. They're winning that game. All right. Yeah, there's no sure. comeback. That's what I'm saying. So um and I, I feel like I feel like he would have 
great impact on on e- on either on any roster that he's on, just because of his on 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 his outlook and his confidence alone. So yeah. No, I think that that's a, a a fair thing to say. I mean, with that kind of talent, it's hard to say that a guy like that wouldn't win. But then again, you know, it, it's difficult because look at Aaron Rodgers. Look at Aaron Rodgers' right. talent. Aaron Rodgers only has one championship to his name to this point in his career. So you never know. It's but it's a great what if. I love what ifs like that. Really is. Um, so that being said, uh, Andy Reid. There's a lot of great coaches in football right now. Mike Vrabel's done a heck of a job out in Tennessee. Uh, for example, obviously, even off the seven and nine season, Bill Belichick is a legendary coach, a surefire Hall of Famer. Um, John, Jim, uh, not Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh is the uh, coach at Michigan. John Harbaugh, his brother, uh, has done a great job with the Ravens. But nonetheless, is Andy Reid the best coach in football right now, or is he just being carried by a great quarterback? Ooh, is he just being carried? Yeah. Uh, I would not say he's just being carried. Uh, I would say that he's possibly the best coach in the football right now. Um, but I think it's a lot of coaches that are close to him. You know, like um, Sean McVay, uh, he's very good uh, X's and O's coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say, obviously, Bill Belichick. So that that's Pete about Carroll. it. Pete Carroll is very good. But I would say that I, – I would definitely say that he is – an elite quarterback, I mean, um, my fault, elite coach, and he's definitely in the top three, top three elite coaches right now. And right now, as far as his success over the past three years, he's number one. So yeah, yeah, that that's and that would be fair. I, I'm not an Andy Reid hater. I love Andy Reid. I was so happy when he finally won a championship because he deserved. It. I mean, by all accounts, he's a great guy, and and his players love him. So it was good to see him win. But I think it was a question that at least was worth asking. Like I said, I think it's a mix of credit. He deserves credit. He's done a great job with the roster. Because you could have a great roster, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to coach him right. He coaches him the right way. He yeah. uses his pieces the right way, which is a credit to him. Um, but uh, sometimes, you know, there's either too little credit that can be assigned to a great coach or too much credit. So it's kind right. of good to see where we would put it, um, you know, in, in its fair context. Tom Brady has won six Super Bowls, as we mentioned earlier. He's gone to the big game nine times, lost twice to my Giants, lost once to Nick Foles and the Eagles, won the other six times. Does Patrick Mahomes have to get, I mean, for example, Joe Montana only has four, but some people consider him to be the GOAT, which is fine. Does Patrick Mahomes have to win six to get that recognition as the GOAT, or can it be that he ends his career being undefeated, winning four like Joe Montana did, and because of his insane talent level, we give him the credit as being the GOAT? I would say that he would need at least four or five to be considered the GOAT or the greatest uh, quarterback ever. Hmm. Uh, I don't think that he needs to reach Tom Brady uh, in, in the amount of Super Bowls that he's been to or the amount of Super Bowls that he's won. It's kind of hard to... Uh, to replicate the amount of times that you've been to a Super Bowl or the amount of times you win a Super Bowl in terms of what Tom Brady has done in terms of his production. But I would say this, if he is just as impactful and just as uh, and, and keeps the, the stats and, and the amount of accomplishment, the accomplishments up and how he wins and things like that and, and the stats and everything, yes, I think that he can be considered the greatest football uh not football player but actually he football player yeah definitely i think that he could be considered the greatest football player ever if you just look at the uh the stats and and everything else because he's gonna put up great numbers yeah he's gonna break records right he already is breaking records exactly right so all right so last few questions here on the afc championship game and then we'll move on finally to the super bowl um do the Chiefs have a lockdown defense? And is Tyreek Hill the best wide receiver in the league? I would say that the defense? Chiefs. I, I was. I would say that the Chiefs have a very good defense. Very good defense. You got Chris Jones, Tyron Matthew, um, Breland. They all. They all make plays. So I'm gonna have to give them. Um, I'm going to say that they, they do have an elite defense and a, a very above-average defense. 
they could get to the quarterback, they got Frank Clark. So, um, you know, like they got players who can play very well and they can uh, definitely um, disrupt the quarterback and the offense. So I'm going to have to give some credit to the defense as well. Yep. Yeah. And as far as Tyreek Hill, where does he rank in your receiver? I mean, he's top five, obviously. But obviously, he's one. top five. You know, he's a yeah. bad boy, bad boy. So I'm yeah. going to have to say that he's, uh, he's definitely uh, like top three. Top three. And a case can be made that he's number one just in terms of him making big plays in the playoffs. Cause you got you got you got like players like Odell Beckham, you know, who show up to the yacht party, but not exactly the playoff game. Yeah, no, I remember that. That was yeah. a big story in New York. Yeah. You got Julio Jones, who does the same thing for the uh uh for the play. He he does show up somewhat somewhat in the playoffs. In his but, prime, Larry Fitzgerald. Right, in his prime, Larry Fitzgerald. But the thing is, is that just in terms of being able to show up all, all the way around, I, I would actually give the credit to Tyreek Hill. Uh, but I'm not going to say that that none of these players are great. Um, wide receivers is kind of very hard to rank anyways. But I'm going to have to give a boatload of credit to Tyreek Hill being a great receiver. So, Not to mention, Tyreek Hill is a multifaceted player because he can kill you on the natural offensive end, but he can also kill you on special teams. Right, exactly. He's a great, he's a great kick returner. So exactly, it, right. I mean, th- there's not many receivers that can do both. Like Devin Hester was a great punt returner and kick returner, but he wasn't. A, he was an okay. He was an average receiver in terms yeah. of the offensive field, from what I remember. But Pat, you know, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Tyreek Hill can is elite, genuinely elite, and top three on both ends of that. So I think that would put him number one for me. So now, finally, we conclude with the game itself. Super Bowl right. 55, uh, Buccaneers in their first Super Bowl since 2002 when they walloped the Raiders against the Chiefs, who are the defending champions, and yeah. back once again to defend their Super Bowl championship. So um, do you want to go one question. by one on the questions? or well, It depends on what you want to do. What do you prefer? Uh, let's go one by one. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to uh, just, you know, spend, we spent all that time previewing the other games not to do a thorough preview of this game, too. So, right. I mean, I think I have a feeling we both have, and maybe we don't, I don't know, but I have a feeling that we both have the same team winning. I'll give you mine in a second, but first, who do you have winning and why? Uh, I have the Chiefs winning because uh, I feel like they're the best team. I feel like this is their time. And I feel like uh, like they know the moment, and I feel like um, I feel like Andy Reid he knows the the right plays to bring up and things like that. So, and plus like their their defense is it's it's very good, and I would say that uh that they're gonna do enough to win the Super Bowl. So yeah. Um, I have the Chiefs in this game as well. I think it'll be a very exciting game. I'm hoping for a very exciting game. I think it'll go de- de- right down to the wire. Um, I think both teams will be uh, firing on all cylinders offensively. Um, but I, I do think the Chiefs take this game. Uh, I know I said – I know I'm contradicting myself technically because I said I, I, uh, I, I, I've I learned not to bet against Tom Brady. But there are certain exceptions to the rule. You know, there's right. certain things that offset that. Patrick Mahomes is the exception. Patrick right. Mahomes is the thing that you that exactly. offsets that. Because if pa- Tom Brady were going up against anybody else, I'd pick the Bucks. But since it's this guy – Right. You know, I I have no problem in betting against Mahomes. You never know. Listen, I remember I had the Panthers beating the Broncos a few years ago. I turned out to be dead wrong on that. Um, Whoa, so. hold on, hold on. Cam Newton, all right, we all know what kind of person Cam Newton is. Yes. Right? So, you know, he's very interesting as a person. So, to say the least. Um, you know, Cam Newton, he's kind of a – very interesting character, and I don't think that 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 was a bad pick, bro. Very bad pick. Um, that. <laughs> hey, but look, look, my my dad went my, my dad went with them too. So uh-huh. yeah, he was. There wrong. was that. Well, then again, okay, you know, there's there's other games. Oh, well, I guess a better comparison would be people had the eighteen and 0 Patriots walloping my Giants back in 07, 08, back in that back in that game. You know, they had him not, – well, not even – it wasn't even going to be close. It was going to be like 49-14. Right. 
but instead that game ended up being 17-14 in favor of my Giants. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Eli Manning and David Tyree. So um, as far as the score, I'm going to say 31-28 Chiefs. Who are you going to say? 38-21. Wow, that's kind of... No, 31-28. 31 28. Um, I think it's going to come close. down to like a field very goal. Close. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say 35. 35. 35 24. Wow. Well, I mean, that's a fairly. In, in, in football, that's close. In football, that is close. But I think it'll be closer than that. I think it'll be one of those Super Bowls that comes down to like a last second field goal, kind of like the early Patriots Super Bowls did with Vinatieri. Where he had to kick a field goal at you know at the end of the um, at the end of the game for them to win. I think it'll be one of those games. I think honestly, whoever has the ball last in this game is going to win. That's not to say the defense is going to play like you know like garbage, but um, I, I just think it's one of those games, man, where it's going to be a battle of the old gunslingers. It's going to be a battle of uh, the new kid on the block and the new gunslinger versus the old. It's kind of like when Brett Favre and John Elway faced off, but ten times better. Um, so I got it being very close that way. I think it'll be. Um, 31 and 28. Uh, last question I'll ask on my end, and I'll throw the floor over to you for the remainder okay. of the questions. Right. Um, we talked a little bit about legacies earlier. This game, what does a victory do for both sides? First with the Bucks, what does a victory do for their franchise? And obviously the golden question, what does it do for Tom Brady? Um, I think that the victory puts, I mean, look, we've already talked about Tom Brady and how great he is. But um, I think that it puts them in a very in a very great um space, you know, where uh, where you can't really get mad at anybody who has anything to say about Tom Brady any anymore or things like that. Yeah. Um, I definitely think that it's it definitely does show that one player can change a franchise, and um, I, obviously that has happened, and um. In basketball, in football, in uh, baseball as well. So and um, hockey, and hockey. So you know, I feel like an impact is everything, and you know, he definitely would have shown his impact. And um, and uh, you know, it doesn't show that Bruce Arians is is an elite coach, though. But it does show that uh, it does show that he is willing to, uh, w- willing to. Um, to give criticism the same as everybody else. Yeah, he's a good coach. I, I never felt him to be elite. I felt him to be a solid coach, though, because let's not, let's not forget, he brought Carson Palmer to the NFC Championship game, bro. Yeah. All right. So so I would say that uh, – I, I, I would say that this does help I, – I don't think that it really helps anymore with Tom Brady's legacy because we already know, you know, how people view him. So yeah. I feel like I feel like it would only help Bruce Arians' legacy, and it definitely would turn around how people view um, Antonio Brown and um, and things like that as well. So, but as far as for the other side, yeah, um, I think that this definitely puts Patrick Mahomes in elite category, and um, I would say that you know like. You, you would have to make him a, a top 10 quarterback, honestly. Like, you would have to make him a top 10 quarterback. I, obviously, you can't really put him over Brady just yet, but you could say the ease ball on his way. Um, but, yeah, that's that, that's what I would say. And for the uh, – for Andy Reid, I would say that this only helps with his elite, co- elite coaching allure. You know, I, I would say that even more players would want to come over there and play with him. And things like that. So, and as far as like Tyreek Hill, if he makes if he makes big plays like he did and T- Travis Kelsey like they did last year, it's only going to help them even more with their elite status. And you can honestly favor them for the next year. So yeah. Yeah, no, I think that that's I think that that's fair. Uh, so yeah, I'll throw the remainder of the questions back over to you. You okay. take it from here. Um, okay, here we go. Which team has the best defensive edge? 
It's tough. I, oh man, this is a good one. Um, it's tough, bro. I, I, I think, I think honestly, for me, it's even because the Chiefs, do they have a, do they have an elite defense? They have a pretty good defense. I wouldn't say they have like an all time defense, but it's pretty right. good. It's the same thing with the Bucks. Like I talked earlier about the Bucks can they can bend, but they don't break. It's kind of the same thing with the Chiefs. The Chiefs will bend here and there. They've gotten much better defensively than where they were against that against the Patriots a couple years ago because people forget that season their defense was like the worst in the NFL. Their offense was the first. Their offense was the best and their their defense was the worst. Now they've improved a lot. So that being said, the Bucks though. Yeah, I mean, I can't discount the playmakers the Bucks have, um, especially on their front line. You know, my, my main man, Pierre Paul, like I said, you know, uh, Giants legend. So I think it's even in terms of defensive matchup. I think this game's going to come down more to the offense than it will the defense. Um, I, I, I agree. Well, I'm going to have to give the slight edge to the Bucks. Fair. Slight edge, slight Fair. edge, because I'm aware that the Chiefs – had had lost their um their offensive line um Eric Fisher in one of the, in the last game. Uh I'm gonna have to give the slight edge to the Bucks for that reason. Um but I do think I do think that this is a close matchup with the defense. I do expect for certain um for a turnover to happen here or there. Um it could happen on both sides. Um, but and Tom Brady, he could just show it so show his age. It could it could happen. So um, you know, and I I could definitely see this team being um being I I definitely see both teams showing their impact right away on defense. So yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you could open the game with the big defensive play because look at the Browns and the Steelers. A turnover started that game, and, you know, the Browns, once they got that turnover, they, they never looked back. Right, yeah. Once yeah, they were able I, to get that early turnover. Right, I agree. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one is, um, which team has the better weapons? Oh, Chiefs. Not even a doubt. This is the easiest question of all, Chiefs. Yeah, right, yeah. I'm going to have to go with the Chiefs as well. They got way too many weapons, too many fast guys. Right, so yeah. you guys is willing to get open, and plus I heard that they might get Sammy Watkins back as well. Oh yeah. And plus, uh, you know they got Clyde Hel- Clyde Edwards Hilaire who could play as well. Ball. So you know, a lot of ballers on this team, and nobody's willing to give up. So yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's move on to the next one. Do you think that this game will be a shootout, blowout, comeback game, or a comfortable victory? We kind of talked about that one earlier. Shootout for me, it's a shootout. Um, I don't see. I'd be very surprised. I, granted, yeah, anything can happen. Like I remember, I thought Seahawks Broncos uh, years ago was going to be a great game because the Broncos had like the number one offense that year, and the Ravens, the Seahawks, excuse me, not the Ravens, had the number one defense, and that game ended up being a snooze fest. It was like forty three to eight. It was mm-hmm. just an absolute blowout. Right. Um, you know, I don't I don't think that this game will, will be that. I don't think it'll be a comeback game. I think, like I said, whoever has the ball last in this game is going to be the team that wins. It's going to be an old-fashioned uh, gunfight at the OK Corral, my friend. I'm going to say it's a comfortable victory. Comfortable. Very comfortable victory because of the defense stepping up. And uh, I, I would say that it's also because of the, um, the plays that Andy Reid decides to run and you know, Andy Reid, he has been on – he's been on a tear as of lately in terms of going forward on fourth down. So um, I'm going to expect for them to 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 throw all their risk and, and, and get all the reward that they need to get to get this W. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I – I um I, I, that's – I can see why uh, you would say that. But, no, nah, I, I, this game, man, it's got – I hope it lives up to the hype, man. I really do. Because it's right. just got the potential to be an all-time great shootout. Um, so yeah, no, I, and I would, yeah. I would, uh, I'd, I'm gonna have to go shootout. We'll disagree on that one respectfully, but we'll disagree on that. All right. Yeah. Uh, does home field advantage play a part in this game? I like this question a lot because it's so interesting, and obviously these are not normal times, quote unquote. Um, 
there will be fans this game. Will it be full capacity? No, because it's not a smart thing to do in the pandemic. Um, you know, the, and the rules vary from state to state. Some states are a little stricter with others and then others, I should say, in, in terms of how many people can be in one spot. Um, right. The good thing about it, a football stadium is obviously you can spread them out to where they're not close to each other. Families show up, they sit in one spot. The next family's well ways away. If this game was being played under normal circumstances and the stadium was at full capacity, of course, it's a home game for the Bucks. you know? And that's yeah. the thing. That's the detail that gets lost in all this hype. This is the first time a team will play at home in the Super Bowl, technically. Um, exactly. So it, it, that's just – it's it's an amazing thing. And if this was last year, um, when right before the pandemic hit, then, yeah, I would say the Bucks have a distinct advantage in that sense. But given that that's not the case and given that the capacity is going to be drastically reduced – um, I don't think so. I, I think it'll be even. And listen, how many times have we seen in a playoff game teams go in there and win on the road? I mean, the Texans did this for years where they had so many playoff games at home and they always lost. They always lost. So, I mean, really, for some teams, can the crowd make a difference? Yeah, because the counterpoint to that is when you would go to Seattle for a playoff game. And Seattle, 12th man, they didn't call them the 12th man for nothing. I mean, you couldn't hear yourself. Some players said they couldn't hear themselves think. It was so loud in there, you know? Yeah. So yeah. sometimes the crowd can be a factor. Sometimes it really doesn't matter much. Um, it just depends on the environment. But I, I think given the fact that, unfortunately, we can't have a full-capacity stadium, I don't think it's an advantage. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's an advantage as well because mm-hmm. the Chiefs have already won in that stadium. Mm-hmm. They've already yeah, won. Yeah, yeah so true. I feel like that, that helps – and the fact that they had the experience of winning. And yes, there will be some fans, but not every fan is going to be for the Buccaneers. Uh, right. A lot of Chiefs like, fans there. They travel well. They, yeah, they definitely do travel well. So I think home field advantage does not matter for this game, especially since, you know, obviously the um, pandemic and the times that we're living in right now. Yep. Obviously, obviously, there's going to be fans, but I don't think that's going to play a huge part. You know, yeah. it, in discouraging or encouraging either side of the field. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Now, for the next question is, um, who will be the first team to turn the football over? I'm going to have to say the Chiefs because the Chiefs did it last week. Right, yeah. <laughs> you did it last week. And your, your TV, to give you a little inside baseball, folks, Marvin's, well, I think, I think everyone's television is about five years ahead of mine. Um, so whatever play happens out where any of my friends that I'm talking to over the phone, out where they're watching the game, you know, it happens an entire five minutes. I'm kidding, of course, I'm being exaggerative, but it happens a while, a little bit before I see it on my end. Um, and we saw it on a, on a kick return. It went bad. Um, and there was a turnover on special teams and Bills took advantage. And that's how they were able to go up in that game early. Nine, nothing should have been 10, nothing, but they missed the extra point. Um, so I, it, the Chiefs special teams, it, they're not sloppy. They're not known for being sloppy, but it, you know, sometimes listen, you know, even the most talented, uh, units can make mistakes in any profession, not just sports. So, uh, I, I think given the Chiefs reliance, uh, not, you know, not just with their special teams, I think also given the Chiefs reliance on having a pass heavy offense, uh, who to say Mahomes doesn't get picked, man? I mean, I know the Bucks defense is studying a lot of films right now. And I, and I think, do I think it's going to be a pick fest with Mahomes throwing picks left and right? No. Right. But I, I definitely can see where a pass gets tipped. Uh, he gets stripped of the ball while he's getting ready to throw it, things like that. Right. So I'll say the Chiefs turn it over first. I would have to agree. I would have to agree. Um, you know, like the Chiefs. Uh, they have the ability to sometimes get sloppy at the wrong time, but uh, um, but I, but I would say that they always come back confident after the uh, after the uh, after the turnover. So that, that's that's where I'm gonna have to, you know, kind of give it to the Chiefs on that end, you know, because they do turn it over. But it's it's not a regular thing. It's not a it's regular not. thing. It's just it's just the nature of the way they play. You're doing right. turn the ball over here and there. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, but I but I would not be surprised if the Buccaneers do it as well because of uh of you know depending on how the Chiefs play on defense. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, let's go over to the next one. Our last three. Wow. Yeah. 
Win or lose, does Tom Brady and um, no, no. Win or lose, does Tom come back? And if he does, will the Buccaneers get back to the Super Bowl next year? I think Tom come back. Come back. I can't talk now. I think Tom comes back rather. Um, yeah, I could see Tom being back. Uh, I don't think there's a reason for Tom to leave quite yet. I mean, listen, yeah, do guys leave at the peak of their powers? Yeah. Uh, and baseball, baseball fans will remember Sandy Koufax did that. Jim Brown, of course, is a great example in football. Barry Sanders is a great, even better example of a guy that left really at the height of his abilities. Yeah. So is there always the chance? Yeah. And I, it's funny to say Brady at the height of his abilities when he's you know, not in his prime anymore, he's 43, but the guy, again, there was never, there's never been to this point in his career, a major drop off in production I don't know. I mean, you never know. Sir. It's up to it's up to him mentally, honestly, to see if he'll come back. But I don't see, I don't see a scenario where he walks away. I can't say I see a scenario right. where he he says that he's done. I really, you know, I I, I just I don't know. I, I think he's he's in it for the long haul with the Bucks. His contract is for two years. Will will we? Is there a chance that maybe he hangs it up after next season? Yeah, because his contract will be up. But do I envision him hanging it up? After this uh, game, win or lose, no, I, I don't see that. And if he comes back next year, listen, I don't bet against Tom Brady. I talked about it earlier, unless, of course, it's against Patrick Mahomes. I don't bet against Tom Brady. So I, I can All see right. the Bucs being right back in the situation next year, man. I agree. I agree. Um, I think that, you know, if Tom Brady loses, I don't think that he's going to hang his head. I do think that he's going to come back, and it could potentially be a rematch next year yeah, he, because yeah, of uh, – a high potential just because of the weapons that he has and uh, obviously the leadership that he has. I mean, we've already seen Aaron Rodgers choke in the NFC title game. Who's to say that he won't choke again? Right, yeah. Uh, And then on top of that, you also have um, the Rams not having a legit quarterback yet. Uh, I mean, Jared Goff, he's a a very good quarterback. Um, But who's to say that, that that he'll even be back next year? You know? Yeah, no. And then, ups and downs this year. And then um, Jimmy Garoppolo, same way. He's had his up and down, up, ups and downs as well. So I'm going to have to say that uh, I'm going to have to say that if Tom Brady loses, he'll come back. And if he wins, I could see him possibly retiring. I would not be surprised. Yeah, no, it would be the perfect time for him to retire. On top. Right, right. The, it's right. how Ray Lewis went out. It's how John Elway went right. out. Right, the, um, the perfect ending. Perfect yeah, ending. it's how Peyton Manning went out. Even though he was at, really washed up, he still went out on top. Exactly. So, yeah. um, but, but if he does come back, even though that he wins, I would not be surprised either. Cause yeah, he might, no. Because Listen, he's, he's – Right, right. He, yeah. he might want to increase his legacy even more, and, you know, the, the lore and things like right, that. Yeah, and, for sure. You know, r- really be – Considered the Mount Rushmore athlete, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. So let's let's move on to the next one. Is is this game a passing of the torch game, like what Magic Johnson did to MJ in the finals? Oh my God, that's such a, I love that comparison. Yeah, Knights ninety one. That was you know, even though Magic obviously unfortunately got sidelined by other stuff with the HIV, um, forcing him into retirement. Um, yeah, that was such a, def- that was such a definitive passing of the torch moment, right? You know, here was magic right. that off the showtime Lakers. And now it's, it's fully his team because Kareem had retired and here's this young buck that, you know, and Michael that finally got past the Pistons and, and then, yeah, you know, that ended up being such a short series, five games. And, um, M- MJ took the reins over from the league as far as being its face, uh, from that point on. We right. talked about it. Yeah, it could be a passing of the torch game where here's the face of the league and Brady, the champion of so many years, the guy that's one of the more recognizable figures uh, in sports period around the globe. And here comes this young stud that's, uh, uh, you know, making a name for himself in, in such fast time and has already established himself as such a megastar. Right. Um, I could definitely see that being, the, yeah, if, if Mahomes and the Chiefs pull it off, yeah, it could be. You know, a couple of years ago, I thought it was going to be the passing of torch in the AFC Championship game when they faced off there, when Tom was still in New England. Um, but it, it wasn't. You know, there was a lot of reasons for that, obviously. Maybe it's because just, of the D4 offsides. Yeah, the the, the, the D4 offsides. The, you know, I was going to say the bad penalties and also the bad defense. Right. She's exactly. defense was just right. miserable. 
Um, but I think if that game was in the passing torch, maybe this one is, you know, maybe this is the definitive, this is my time now moment. It's kind of like, um, well, I, I don't want to make this comparison because I'm about to say LeBron is still a recognizable face. And LeBron and Steph are kind of equal in their stardom. Um, but it, it's it's definitely, again, I'll use a hockey reference. You won't get this one, but my, some of my listeners will. The Islanders had a had a great dynasty in the late early 80s. They won four championships in a row. Then came Gretzky and the Oilers. And when the Islanders were going for the five peat, that's when the Oilers knocked them off and started their own dynasty. And so it could be very well be that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it, it definitely represents a passing the torch, just in terms of the age difference between the two. And obviously, if the Chiefs win, it's immense. It. Yeah, I, I could definitely see it being that way as well. I think that. Uh... You know, if the Chiefs win, then it's definitely going to be a passing, passing of the cho- torch moment. You may even see uh, Tom Brady go to go go to congratulate sure. um, yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Hey, he's a good sportsman. I can see that. He's never been known as a bad sportsman. That's not true. <laughs> he does well, not always he congratulate people. <laughs> he does not always <laughs> congratulate people. He congratulated people. Eli. I remember him congratulating Eli. He did. Yeah, the two times they faced up, faced off, and Eli won. You know, did he also congratulate David Tyree? I don't know if he ever saw <laughs> David Tyree. I think I think he. I know he congratulated Nick Foles too. He did. No, he did not. You know, no, he, he probably didn't graduate. Uh, uh, congratulate Tyree. I don't think anybody did. <laughs> yes, <laughs> on the Patriots side. I just had to make a little little dig, um, but um, I don't mind. Good joke. Yeah, great memories for me. I don't mind. Uh, if Tom Brady wins this, I mean, uh, my fault. Um, if Patrick Mahomes wins this, does it already make him a top 10 court? Or, yeah, we already did say this. Yeah, it does for sure. So that yeah. brings us to the last one. Yeah, the last one is, does it, do the Chiefs end up repeating if they do win? It's not a given. And I'll bring up the example of the Niners. The Niners went back to back in the late 80s. They won in 88. They also won in 89. They were going for it in 90. They got as far as the NFC Championship game. Joe Montana right. brought them as far as that game. And then my New York Giants uh, on the road stopped that. And uh, the Giants went on to beat the Bills in Super Bowl. Uh, the infamous Scott Norwood wide right at the end of the game. He missed the field goal, um, of which I think a couple of days ago was the 30th anniversary of that. Um so it's not a given because teams eventually, we saw this with the Warriors and the Raptors. I don't mean to bring up painful memories for you, but, you know, you saw eventually teams figure you out, you know, and that's not to say that they're going to stop you. It's not automatic. They're going to stop you, but teams eventually figure out ways to pull even with you. And that makes it a lot harder. It's a lot. It's very hard to stay on top in sports. You talk about dynasties. I mentioned the Oilers just now. That's what makes I mean, the last true dynasty in, in sports was uh, the Yankees in the late 90s. They won four World Series in five years. That's not easy to do. They three-peated from 1998 to 2000. That's not easy to do. But eventually, teams figured them out. You know, and they didn't have a run nearly as successful this century. So I think that's the case. Uh, is that to say that they're going to stop them from getting to the uh, Super Bowl? No, because the Warriors were still getting to the finals. Even if they didn't always win the finals, they still got there. But eventually... You know, there's a shelf life in sports, and um, I wouldn't say it's a given, you know, but I, I it, would I bet against it? No. I could see the Chiefs repeating, but I wouldn't say it's 100% certain that it's going to happen. I wouldn't say it's 100% either as well. Um, I, I would say that it's very possible that the Chiefs could get knocked up by anybody next year, yep. depending on – you know, um, the team's growth and the organization's growth and how they decide to go about things. Uh, we just spoke about um, the Bills potentially being a threat. Yep. So, you know, but but I wouldn't bet against it either uh, because of how good the, the Chiefs organization is, uh, Patrick Mahomes and his team-friendly deal. They could potentially get anybody to um, to help even more on the defensive end to make them even more elite. So, um, so I would not be surprised if the Chiefs do win next year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but, but I'm not going to say it's a given. I would not say it's 100% certain. Uh, like, like anything in sports, Patrick Mahomes, he could get injured and he could be out for the season. Right. Or Tyreek Hill could get hurt or Travis Kelsey could get hurt or 
you know, Andy Reid can can call up a bad play. Anything can happen, you know? Right. We almost saw that. Patrick Mahomes, you know, he was very close. He's this close to not even playing. Right, yeah. Because of the concussion, you know? Yeah. And, and thankfully, his concussion wasn't severe. But imagine if it was. Imagine if he had to stay out for an extended period of time. There's just a lot of what-ifs in sports, period. And nothing's ever a given, as we found Exactly. I, so. Yeah. so in terms of that, yeah, that this concludes what's been – a very uh, fun edition of the Mike New Haven podcast and the Miles Ahead podcast. We've done another crossover. This one, this one, man, this one's always a lot of fun, man. This one's, it, it's lit. It was as lit as we thought it was going to be. All right, yeah. So, yeah, this, this, is our, this has been our recap of the AFC and NFC Championship games, as well as, of course, our, our preview for Super Bowl 55. So before we get out of here and enjoy our Fridays, uh, let's plug ourselves, bro. Where can the people find you? Uh, people can find me on my Instagram account called Miles Ahead Pod. That's M I L E S Ahead Pod. I will be talking about mostly the podcast as as well as you know s- certain things. I can be a little bit comedic as well, um, just just in terms of like um, giving out stuff on the story or Instagram stories and things like that. I have very interesting takes about certain things, but. Uh, and you could also find me on Twitter as well. I haven't really started using it as 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 of late, but uh, I will start using it soon. Um, let me find the name of it real quick. Yeah, because I'm going to tag you when I tweet out this uh, this uh, podcast. I'm, I'm going to tag you in it. I'm going to tag you. Um, I always tag you, but. Right, yeah. Yeah. Give me a quick second. Yep. And, and in the meantime, uh, while he does that, like I said, uh, Detective Irma Rivera coming up in February, uh, retired NYPD detective, um, first grade. And she'll be my guest. Uh, it, I don't want to say the exact date, but she'll be my guest coming up in February. Okay. I'm it's, excited about that. Okay. It's at Marvin M. McIntyre, but it's it's no R at the end. It's, I mean, uh, it, it's R at the end. But there's no E at the end, and then it's yeah. just the number one. Yeah. And let me uh, pull it up. Let me pull it up on my Twitter, on my Twitter, so that way I can give the people the exact um, at. That way they know for certain as I search here because I follow you, obviously. So I'm, I'm going to pull it up. Uh, yeah, it is Marvin, which is Marvin's name, M, in, as in his middle initial, and then McIntyre, M C I N T Y R one. That is again. Uh, and Marvin M and then McIntyre M C I N T Y R one. So uh, on that note, I'll plug myself. And then, was there anything else you want to plug, up, bro? And you could also find me on the obviously, uh, you know, Anchor. Uh, you could see me on SoundCloud. Uh, I mean, not SoundCloud, but uh, Apple and uh, Anchor. Uh, miles ahead uh, podcast. And uh, I would be available on those platforms as well. I'm available on various platforms, but those are the main ones that everybody likes to check out. You know, Spotify, Apple, and Google. So, and also Anchor, Anchor as well. And, All right. Yeah. Yep, that's about it. I mean, I, I would plug my 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 regular Instagram account, but I don't know if the if the world is ready for that one. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's best kept under wraps for yeah now. it's best kept under wraps right for for yeah, more so appropriate time more appropriate uh, time right exactly yeah. and then, then i'll plug myself and then we'll get out of here um as always uh, if you don't know where to find the podcast by now that's your fault no, i'm kidding uh you can find the podcast just about anywhere we're, we're everywhere i'm on spotify i'm on apple i'm on spreaker um anywhere that you get i'm on iHeartRadio now too which is pretty cool i'm on amazon as well so um, anywhere that you search for the Mike in New Haven podcast, uh, yeah, you can find me there on Twitter. I'm at Mike in New Haven. Uh, so you can just, if you don't, if you're not already following me there, you can follow me there. Uh, LinkedIn, I'm really active on LinkedIn too. You can find me on Mike Cologne there. Just type in Mike Cologne, Mike the New Haven podcast on LinkedIn and I'll pop up um, for sure. And you can uh, connect with me there and uh, you can see all my posts on LinkedIn as well. Um, and of course, like I said previously, subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave a five-star rate and review on Apple, on Spreaker, wherever you get your podcasts. It just really helps the show. And subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, where I post a video version of these podcasts. Uh, MC's Audio, it's named my channel, MC apostrophe S Audio. 
and uh, you can find all the uh, content in video form there. Like I said, exciting guests coming up in, in the near future. Uh, I gave you the name of one of them. I'll uh, let you know more as I book hopefully more guests to come on uh, in the ensuing months and bring you more great episodes. So that said, on behalf of Marvin McIntyre, I'm Mike Cologne, and we will see you next time.